Hello. Hello, governor. Sorry. Sorry if I'm loud. One sec. I'm just getting set up in my chair. I hope you guys are doing well. Hello, hello. Uh, so yeah, we're, uh, we're back at it again with another dev stream. I'm going to turn the music down a little bit. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> Sorry, VOD viewers. I know you guys can't hear the music because I have the Twitch stuff set up so that it doesn't record the audio, so. Hello. But, uh, yeah, we're here today for another dev stream. So it's going to be kind of boring. You know, just like this, you know, painting and stuff. It's going to be... Uh, pretty pretty boring i would say um we're gonna be working on terrain painting we're gonna be working on painting some foliage and then i'm also gonna work on some background scenery or like just like doing a rough test concept just to see what we can do um but yeah no otherwise uh that'll pretty much be it so it's gonna be some some boring stuff so if you want to watch you're welcome to um, obviously you don't have to watch um but yeah, no, I, 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 it's 5 p.m. So I was like, okay, yeah, I do wanna, I do wanna at least stream a little bit of work stuff today. So get, get a little bit done, cause uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna stop at like 7 p.m. Cause I'm gonna go make some food, and then I have a friend stream I'm gonna be watching later tonight. Um, so we got about two hours of working on stuff. So, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I think I can go ahead and get you guys on over here. Um. Let me just make sure everything's correct here. There we go. So I'll go ahead and switch you guys over. Hello. So I'm, I'm adjusting the music volume because it is a little bit loud for me. There you go. And if you guys can barely hear it, I apologize. Like, I like my music being very subtle. Um, yeah, you guys can barely hear that. I'll turn up the music, like, a little bit so that you guys can hear it, but it'll still be quiet for me. Just something like that. As, let me know if that's a little too loud. Otherwise, uh, here we go. We are back. So, I've been doing a lot of manual terrain painting for the past few days. The past, like, two days. So, yesterday I was doing a bunch, and then the day before I was doing a bunch. So, where we, we last left, I think, if I remember correctly, we last left off the stream with painting like we were just painting i think the ferns under the trees and stuff um and since the last stream which i don't did we do we didn't do tuesday did we no i think we did monday not tuesday no did we do a dev stream on tuesday i don't think we did a dev stream in a, in a bit actually i don't remember but anyway um i actually got quite a lot done <laughs> since we left off um i'll actually show you guys so all of the foliage in the crater is now basically painted, aside from, like, the border areas. Um, so as you can see here, I've got all the, uh, the, fer the ferns placed, and then I got all the spaces between the gaps actually painted with uh, pine needles now. Um, so I actually went through and I manually painted all of this, so it took me quite a while. I think the crater itself took, like, four or five hours of, of just, like, painting. Actually, I think it took like four or five hours of like, well, yeah, now I think about four to five hours of just painting all the foliage and the terrain painting itself, but um, it's not perfect, but I am very happy with it. Uh, I, I'm happy with how it turned out and such, so, um, I mean, we, we can still add some more types of plants, like we can add some bushes in between if we want to, but for the most part, the entire crater is painted. I think the only thing that we're missing is really just like, extra plants that I need to make for the actual uh, lake because I do want to have like reeds and stuff on the side of the lake and stuff and maybe like lily pads um, I do want to add stuff like that because I think it'd be really cool um, but I have to go back and make the assets for that and I'm not going to do that right now um, last session was yeah Monday that sounds about I think maybe Monday um, but yeah no the entire the entire crater is essentially painted now with foliage like I went through and I did all this manually it took me quite a while, but uh, we've got ferns under the trees and gaps between the trees, so it actually looks much better now. It looks significantly better now. It's not perfect, but it, I, I like it. I like it. Oh, it took me a while. Um, and so the entire crater is basically painted now, and we've got like some fields as well of grass, which we can work with later to add more to them, but 
you know, if I zoom out, then it's like, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'll show you guys the progress I got done so far, right? So these, like, these green and brown spots are basically all the stuff I've manually painted. So yesterday I actually went and I manually painted all of this, and that took about four to five hours of, like, painting the ferns and the terrain painting. Um, so we still got quite a ways to go before we finish painting everything that I want to. But I have a good system going, so I'm very happy about it. Um, we're going to probably add some big grass fields up here because, you know, we have like all these gaps of grass here, but I'm probably not going to do that for a lot of this. I'm probably just going to keep it like strict forest. In fact, I was actually thinking about going back and, uh, and removing some of these grass patches down here. I was thinking like maybe like maybe instead of having like these uh these grass patches like this, I would actually replace it with um with the uh this actually yeah we're gonna do that because I'm I'm kind of I don't I don't think I like this. You know, it's interesting because like you know you work on um you work on you work on stuff and then you kind of like come up with new ideas and like stuff that may look better because you you work on it long enough and you're like oh yeah maybe this would be better if I do it this way instead of this way kind of deal. Um, so it's actually kind of nice, all things considered. Um, so that's kind of why I like doing the dev stuff. You can kind of just, like, you kind of build stuff, and then you're kind of like, oh, maybe I could actually do it this way instead, you know? Um, so I, I actually quite like that. It's quite nice. Not perfect, but it's nice. So, and, but this is basically, like, the strategy I've been I've been going for, is I basically have, like, the gaps between trees, and I paint them as the the like pine needles and then the actual like fern parts I like these parts I actually paint as like the actual greenery now if that's technically not right I could just swap them and it would work like I could swap these two layers here um so I so like it's still worth painting it it's just that I would swap out the layer if, if I wanted to change it or something um so that won't be too much of a hassle all things considered um but we're gonna we're gonna quickly just like update this section here to be actually the pine forest. I know someone's probably gonna be like, "This isn't how pine forests actually are," but I I don't know. I'm I've sat here trying to figure out how I want to make this look, and I think I actually have a nice uh layout now, so I'm happy with it. Oh, thank you, Lee. I appreciate the follow. Welcome, welcome. I'm just doing. Just boring terrain painting, boring foliage painting for my VR chat map, you know, all that crazy stuff. I'm just quickly fixing some error, little errors here that I kind of wanted to fix. Okay, and then take you, and I'll put a tree right here. I'll go ahead and do all this. I like how it looks, though personally I, I i was like really trying to figure out how i wanted to do it and then once i kind of like figured this out i was like you know what i think i can live with this i like it just get rid of all the grass here the little gap here and we'll put a tree right here i always like to do this where um if there's usually a gap in the canopy i usually just try to add a tree just to to break it up and stuff um, we're gonna probably, we're gonna do a bit of manual painting, so you guys can kind of see how I do it, but then we're also gonna do, uh, we're also gonna do some background scenery and stuff as well. What are you, what are you making? Um, I am working on an environment update for my VR chat map. This is, a uh, for specifically for my VR chat map, the Wanderer. Um, so I am basically painting the environment right now. It's not perfect, um, but... I am just painting the environment right now. So that's that's all we're really doing. We're just painting environments essentially. It's super basic and stuff. So I'm going back and just updating some slightly older areas that I was working on a few days ago. Um because I have like a new thing I'm doing now, like a new like a new strategy. So I'm kind of following that now. Um and it's actually turning out pretty okay, all things considered. Um but yeah, this is my VR chip map. I've had it since I mean where I've I started working on it in like 2018 and I come I come to it on it. I work on it on and off a lot, but uh this is like a, the big like big environment update I'm working on that I've wanted to do for a while. Um so I'm very happy to actually finally be able to start work, working on it and stuff cuz uh frankly I've been putting it off for quite a while. Not perfect, but I mean hey, nothing's perfect. Nothing's uh nothing's perfect in this world, so 
you gotta work with you what what you got. I have learned a bit about environment stuff though. You know, it's good practice, I would say, like working on all this, because you kind of like learn like, oh, maybe this looks better if you do it like this, you know, kind of yada yada yada, that kind of stuff. Um, but there's a lot of benefits to to sitting down and like doing stuff like this, even if it might not turn out very well. Kind of learn. I see. I assume Unreal, uh, Unreal Terrain stuff would also be kind of the same, except I know for a fact Unreal Terrain. I have a bit I would have a bit more control over because I can literally make like a material that auto places um like the mater the the terrain texture based on like slope and elevation so you can make it to where like if it's a steep enough slope it'll have like a dirt texture applied to it or something which is really cool. I don't think you can really do that in Unity, but in Unreal you can. So, it's kind of cool. It's just a neat little thing I remember looking into. I'll keep that. Actually, now we'll probably do it in that grass patch. So what I'm doing now is I'm updating some of these like grass patches that we have because we don't really need them. Like I only really want the grass patches to either be like a big field or like next to the road. I don't really want them to be like stretching deep into the forest like this unless they're like a really big grass field. So I'm going back and I'm like I'm just like removing uh quite a bit of this like here like we'll stop like right here we'll keep this kind of grass field and then what we'll do is we'll plop a tree right here and then we'll plop another tree right here like that and we'll kind of just go up actually that's fine we'll do one more so we'll kind of just like paint this kind of break up the the pathing of the the stuff i don't know so I'm, if my brain's a little jumbled right now it's because i i didn't i woke up not too long ago because you know freaking you know, crazy sleep schedule. All right, guys. I was, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna totally wake up at like noon, and then I did, and then I just went back to sleep, and I was like, fuck, god damn it, I did it again. Like, god damn it, why can't I just get out of bed? It's like, I have to trick my own mind to get out of bed. Sometimes I swear to God, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well. Um. I'm doing pretty okay. I'm actually kind of in a good mood, all things considered, because, uh, you know, I've got this going now. It's nice, because, like, once you get to, like, a point, you kind of, like, you can see the finish line, and it's actually kind of nice. For me, it's, like, I still have some more things I have to do, but get, now that I have, like, a, a set strategy for, like, painting and stuff, I, I, do, I, do, I do feel like I'm getting kind of to that point. Stream has a tag, small stream. Yeah, small stream. I'm not, I'm not a big streamer. I'm a small streamer. I don't know. I just started using that tag because, um, I mean, it's appropriate. We only have, like, an average of 5 to 10 viewers. It's not very big, so. Plus, I think people actually do use that tag to find, like, small content creators that they want to watch. I, I think I've had a few cases of that happening. Um, so, it's not bad. Like, I know I have, like, 700-something followers, but, I mean, that's still small in the grand scheme of things, you know? <laughs> that's that's still tiny compared to, like, you know, other places. <laughs> I think I was talking to someone about that recently. I think I was talking to a friend of mine, I think, last night about, like, I remember doing the math for, like, how many Twitch subs you would need to, um, how many Twitch subs you would need to actually be able to, like, pay your bills per month, you know? Like, if you had, like, normal, but, like, average bills, like, you know, the the average you would pay for bills, like, how much would you have to make up from Twitch subs? How many Twitch subs would you need to pay that off? And I think it was, like, 250, I think, was the number that I came up with. 250. So, at minimum, you would need at least 250 subscribers. And that's assuming you get, like, just, like, the tier one subs, I guess. Yeah. And that's a lot. 250 subscribers, that's crazy. Um, but, I mean, big channels probably have, like, tons, so. But, I mean, getting to that point is, like, that's, that's if you get, like, viral or something. Like, if you're really famous. Like, that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Getting, like, 250 subs is not something you, that can, can just be achieved. It's, like, you kind of have to grind for it so it's crazy because like i think on average i have about 
on Twitch, I would say I usually have about five subs on average. Um, subscribers, I, I should stop saying subs because that could be taken the wrong way, but uh, I usually have like five subscribers on Twitch, I think, on average, usually. Um, I think if like it fluctuates between like five to ten, it depends. Do I bother you? Uh oh. <laughs> hey, sorry to bother. Thank you, Miyazaki. I was about to go. I was about to do it myself, but I forgot that the uh, OBS window doesn't have a uh, doesn't have the ability to to do that because I, I I use the dock. I I dock the window in OBS for chat when I do these streams. So I can't exactly. Well, I guess I could just click on the person and then. Okay, yeah, never mind. Okay, that's easy enough to do. God, those 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 kind of bots are so annoying, man. It's like, dude, I'm just... you street crazy. Imagine having, imagine paying for the uh, fake viewers. Could you imagine that? Crazy. Wouldn't be, wouldn't even be worth it honestly like better to just build organically but i guess some people are just that desperate that they'll they'll pay for fake viewers if it means they can voice their clout or something i don't know it's crazy okay we're gonna get rid of this little patch here kind of pointless yeah it is pointless uh isn't I remember, um, I think it was December 2019 when I was doing a birthday stream. I got like 400 bot follows and I remember being so pissed because I was like, this isn't right. So I went from like 400 followers to like 800 and I remember going through and removing all of those bot followers. It was very satisfying. And now we're actually almost at 800 like organically, which is super nice. I think we're at like... 796 we're actually close to 800 uh, followers actually holy shit we're, we're getting there i don't really advertise so the fact that i've gotten this many followers over the years is actually kind of crazy to think about um i got like four more followers and i'll be at like an 800 well that's crazy to think about holy crap i don't i don't think i'll really do anything when i get to like 800 followers i mean i, I could do like a be like a celebratory stream or something i guess should copy portions of that message and put them in the auto mod filter. Um, yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, if I get around to it. Um, because I very much could just add that to the auto mod, uh, like feature and just have it like delete the message or something. Because that's what the mod stuff does. It's actually kind of nice. I haven't really touched it because I've really had no reason to touch it. Like, I've never had a really big reason to touch the auto mod stuff. I, I mean, I have a couple words that are blacklisted. Like, if you try to say, like, a couple, like, really bad, like, slurs and stuff, that gets blacklisted, obviously. Like, I, I did that, so I would avoid that. But outside of that, I haven't really, haven't really touched it too much. Okay, uh, I think I'm done painting on this side. Yeah, so by the way, like I said, um... Here's all the painting I've gotten done so far. So the whole crater is basically done painted. Um, and then now we're painting the outside. So this whole section I painted last night. Uh, and what we're going to do is before we start painting, I'm actually going to do some interesting uh, background scenery. So as you guys can tell, there's an extra terrain here. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make we're going to do this, but we're going to like make these very low resolution. I'm trying to remember how I do this. Uh, like, I don't want the ter terrain texture resolution to... Actually, we're going to keep it default for now. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, work on... We're going to work on um, the background scenery for the Wanderer. So we're going to quickly just add a bunch of these terrains. Like, these guys. We're going to kind of just, like, slap some corner pieces in here. Okay, so we're going to do some background scenery. Now, what we got to do first is we need to set these all to be the same height, which I believe I already had that set. So set height. Yeah, it was already set. Okay, so set height. Flatten tile. Flatten tile. Flatten tile. Flatten tile. 
So the reason we're doing this is because we're actually making background scenery. So we're going to use terrains to make a very low resolution background. Um, just so we have like some kind of background scenery. And we're going to keep it really low res because it's not meant to be like viewed close up. Um, so actually what we're going to do is we are going to... Actually, we're going to keep it probably set to... Uh, actually, wait. Can I, can I change this if I do paint texture? Is this actually set to a pine forest? Oh, it is, I think, right? Oh, it is, okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of just, I was kind of playing with this last night a little bit. So I'm kind of thinking like, okay, we want to do like, you know, maybe some big mountains or something. Um. So I was like, okay, it's going to be kind of laggy doing this, but the idea is we want to, like, I'm trying not to, oh, no, shoot, go back. I'm trying not to mess with, like, the interior terrain, like, the inside. Uh, I'm trying to just, like, do the outside here. So, like, we do, like, mountains like this, kind of. You know, it's it's a little weird. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do this if possible. We're gonna kind of just paint like this and then see what the uh the, the, bit the scene looks like afterwards. We don't have to make we don't have to make it like too tall or anything. We we really just want like rolling hills kind of feel so. something like this basically so if we go down here oh look at that dude that already looks so much better with the backdrop doesn't it guys wow wait and if i turn the lighting off it's like okay well it looks weird right now but the idea is like i would basically you you would it would just be like really like it would be much more foggy or at least it would be a little bit darker but that does look nice though I like that. I like that backdrop. That's kind of nice. Dude, this reminds me of, um, of you. So I live near the Appalachian Mountains, and if I actually drive up to near the mountains, you can start to see them in the distance, and it, it kind of reminds me of this, which is really nice, because uh, it kind of reminds me of, of like something I see in real life. Except, I mean, this mountain might be a little bit too tall, but... I at least have like one tall mountain because why not? I think that's good. I actually that's that's pretty much all we really need to do. Actually, we don't really. I mean, we could add trees to them, but I think that'd be a little bit much. So instead, what we're gonna do is um we are going to uh we're gonna set the resolution of these to be like very low. Actually, I'm gonna keep it like this for now because I I know I need to change like the resolution. Um. Like, the idea is that these aren't going to get, like, light map baked, or, I mean, I mean, they might be, but they're going to be, like, very small. Like, that's the whole point. They're supposed to be really small. And they're not supposed to be, like, a very high detail. So, like, if I click on this, um, like, detail resolution on this is, like, 1024. Um, but I don't want it to actually be that high resolution, so we're going to actually turn this... What's, what's 1024 divided by 2? Uh, 512, right? Wait, the number of cell cells in a single patch, this value is squared from the and must be divisible by 8. Detail patch is currently allocated. Okay, wait, so if I reduce the number, it goes down, right? Oh, okay, so it, it just... Yeah, so we're going to turn these to, like, 180, or 128, actually. Yeah, 128. We are, we are going to, like, reduce the resolution of these by, like, a lot. Because they're not meant to be, they're not meant to be, like, crazy. They're meant to just be, like, background scenery. So we don't want them to be that high resolution, so. You know, I was kind of expecting this to be a little bit more complicated. But honestly, I'm kind of glad that this look turned out so nice.
Okay, there we go. Um, oh yeah, height map resolution. Um, what is the height map resolution of this terrain set to? So this one's 1024 to 1024 at 512. Okay, so we actually want this to be like 513. I'm just going to reduce this down, like just reduce it all down to like, like very low. I could even make it lower actually. Like the literally the whole point is you're not supposed to see this up close, so I don't care how like low resolution it is. So we're just going to quickly update this. Oh, no, don't do that. But you know, I hope you guys are uh hope you guys are all doing well. Actually, we might even make these even lower actually. Maybe like again 129 actually. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? We'll do that. We'll do. We'll we'll make them all one twenty here. I'm uh I'm doing pretty okay. I was uh I was doing I was having a late night convo with some friends last night. Pretty good convo. Uh, talking about stuff. Um. I was also doing some like dev stuff as well with my friend, and I I um I discovered that uh. I, you know, I was talking about this whole like the whole spookality map idea and how like we wanted to do like AI and stuff. But the problem is that like the nav mesh wouldn't move with the uh, object when we like auto placed it. I actually found out that it is possible um, and it does work. And there are ways to even bridge the gap between different rooms that have their own nav mesh baked. Um, so I'm very happy about that. I know it's possible and I know how to do it. So I'm very happy about it. Oh, wait, look how, wait, wait, how low resolution is that? I just realized that the, the freaking, like, yeah, it's very low resolution, but that's fine. I, that's what I want, so I don't care. Can you tell me how? Um, yes, I can. So... Um, what we, what I, what I, so my friend Sam was, helped me with this. So what we found out was there is a component you can attach to a specific object. I think it's called like a nav mesh, uh, what's it called? It's, it's, there's a, there's a component that you basically attach to the object and then you can use, uh, various settings on the component to like filter what exactly gets baked when you bake that particular component, that's nav mesh. So you can literally filter it to only bake the, a nav mesh onto that specific room like we we found that that's how we could totally do that um and then if you bake other the other components on the other rooms it won't override the one in the current room so each room would have their own like small little nav mesh baked for them um and when you move the room it would move the nav mesh because the component attached to the uh room would actually move the nav mesh with it so yeah it would totally it would it, it work like it would move the nav mesh with it when you moved it and but then we ran into another issue where it was like okay well how does the ai go from one room to another if the two rooms are separate nav mesh as well there's actually another component in the nav mesh called the nav mesh like what is it called it's called um i have it right here wait it's called i'm gonna look it up real quick because i looked it up last night and i have it in my history somewhere where is it uh, it is called, where is it? Um, give me one second. I had to go through my, my freaking thing here. A nav mesh link. That's what it's called. So there's this thing called a nav mesh link, which is a component you could put on an, ob on an object. And it basically lets your AI jump from one nav mesh to another. So you can use it to like jump over gaps and stuff. Um, so a combination of the fact that like, it is possible to move a nav mesh with the rooms and adding a nav mesh link so that you can jump the AI can jump between rooms means that it is entirely possible that our idea is possible, White. It is entirely feasible. So also hi Ryan. Um we 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 tested it a little bit last night, um, just for fun. And yeah, it did basically work. So um it was kinda cool, actually. A nav mesh surface. It's a component. I don't remember what the component's called though. Uh let me check. I'm gonna I'm gonna check real quick. Yeah, it's a it's a nav mesh surface component, yes. Uh and 
you can like attach it to so what what we would do is you would attach the nav mesh surface component to the like the the parent object of the room in question and then we would bake it and it would you know you could set the filters on it as well to only apply to that one room um and then that room would basically have a nav mesh and then we would just do that for each one of the rooms essentially and then if the rooms have like a gap in them that they that we want the ai to jump over we just use a nav mesh link um and then we could use a nav mesh link to jump between rooms essentially at least that's in theory what's on the schedule today um i was setting up the background scenery so as you can tell we've got some nice little mountain scenery now so if i go here actually i'll just i'll just do a i'll just do a quick uh little play test here i'll show you we're working on more environment stuff basically uh, more terrain painting foliage painting and we're kind of doing the background scenery real quick here just to see if it'll look nice so i'm also talking to white about the uh the the, the spooktality map idea and how last night i was sitting down with my friend sam and we were playing around with uh if it was possible to move a nav mesh that was baked into uh baked in unity and it is possible um so the nice thing is that we would only have to we would only have to bake the nav mesh we would only have to bake bake the nav mesh um once for each room and then it would be good to go no matter what so it's really nice i mean obviously there's probably some kind of like hidden stuff that we don't know about that <laughs> might be like hindering that maybe or maybe like vr chat doesn't like the nav mesh script like i didn't even i i haven't tested like if vr chat likes the nav mesh script at all so I, I don't know. Okay, and we're going to go up here. Um, so if you come up here, so if you walk out, the idea is like you would see like the background scenery. Now, this is just a rough sketch. I might adjust some of these a little bit more. Like I might make that mountain a little bit smaller and then kind of fill in that gap. But yeah, the TLDR is like you would see basically this. Now, it probably won't look like this because this is kind of like has like a fog on it. And I kind of don't like that it looks like this. I kind of want this to be more like, I don't know, penis shaped mountain. No, there will be no PP shaped mountain. I promise. Miyazaki might actually remember. Um, one of the older versions of the Wanderer used to have a, a like terrain backdrop, and you could actually walk up the mountain if you found your way up there. <laughs> now, I mean, I'm not gonna put a, I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna put a collider um on the border to stop you from from map breaking so by all means if you wish to boundary break you are more than welcome to you're not going to find anything out there but you're more than welcome to do it so oh yeah here let me exit play mode. make mount rushmore no i'm not going to do mount rushmore at fred's head That's, that would be funny though um but i'm not going to do that okay i'm going to quickly adjust this tall mountain here because i kind of don't like how tall this is whoa oh he's first oh he spooked me there god he's he's first he's the first one on the stream yeah nobody knows to claim the first yet so ryan you're always going to be the first okay yeah no vr chat will usually tell you if you can't like upload a script and stuff uh It's kind of 45 stream streak wow that's crazy oh yeah i haven't actually added a i haven't really touched up on the fog in unity much yet so ideally because right now we have i think we have unity fog in the map right now um but i'm gonna probably use silence fog instead I'm going to probably use silence fog instead. So hopefully the backdrop will look a little bit different and more. Um, more clean, I would say. Now I'm going to quickly just like. Obligatory every stream question when milk will be in the wanderer. When I add it. I thought I'm going to say that every single time you ask. It'll be in the wanderer when I add it in the wanderer. So. Oh yeah, but for anyone new that joined, uh, I don't know when. I just whenever I add it. I mean, it could be this update if I sneak in just a quick milk carton so that you'll stop asking. 
Maybe, I don't know. Um, but for anyone new that joined, um, as you can tell, um, also I just realized I should probably make these all be uh, stone, because I just noticed that uh, it, it looks kind of weird with the backdrop, so we're going to actually quickly just do that terrain. Don't make. So we're going to actually just replace this with the stone there. Just so we keep it kind of consistent, so. We're actually on the moon! <laughs> but I had an issue where they changed the method to bake Nabish static so you can't activate it through Udon scripts. Um, well, the thing is white. We wouldn't need to activate it through Udon's uh, nav uh, scripts. We would just bake the nav meshes for all the rooms and then upload it to VR chat. And they should still just have their same data no matter what. At least I hope so. I could be freaking wrong by all means. So, hello guys, welcome to the moon. We're on the moon right now. <laughs> but if you can move the nav meshes out of baking, then that shouldn't be an issue. Last time I played with the nav meshes, baking yeah no um we were able to if you had like the nav mesh surface like, like script like a uh, component attached to the object and like the the parent object and you moved it it should move in during this is during runtime by the way uh during runtime it should move i i could be like maybe we did something weird to make it work but i i'm pretty sure it, yeah <laughs> new lore i know right crazy wow New lore, new lore. All right, so what are we working on now? Um, we are gonna do some more boring painting because I, I um, I just want you guys to know that uh, this section right here, from the road all the way to like right here, this whole section took about four hours of painting. By the way, I would like to note that that took four hours uh, last night of just painting. So we still have a long way to go. <laughs> we still got a long way to go. Um, it does look really nice from far up, yeah. Look at that. And for context, the uh, the inside crater is like ten percent bigger than the current map. So yeah, you're gonna. There's a lot more space. It's kind of crazy. Um, I think one of my favorite areas that I kind of randomly placed was actually the uh, was actually the campsite over here. We haven't painted the foliage fully yet, but I like the. I like the cozy feel of the campsite so far. I actually like this. I mean, once I actually paint like the stuff around it and the foliage, it should look a lot better. But I actually am really digging how this looks. It looks nice. More space to get lost. In. Exactly. I mean, you guys won't be able to go into the caves. I don't know if I showed this actually yet, but um, I'm close. This update will close off the caves. So you won't be able to go down into the caves, but you'll have a shit ton of area to explore up here. So maybe that's more than enough compensation, okay? Is that enough compensation? Are we good? Is it is that is that an acceptable trade, my got my my friends? Is that is that acceptable? I you you no longer can go into the caves for the time being, but you have like a hundred percent more area to explore on the surface. Is that is that an acceptable trade? Nothing beats milk. Ugh. If I add milk and the first thing you don't do, if I add milk and the first thing you don't do, uh, 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 I can't raise words. Goddamn. If I add milk and the first thing that you do is, 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 uh, fuck God. Why can't I say sentences? Um, if I add milk and the first thing you don't do is turn into a skeleton and drink it, then I will be very disappointed. I, I hope I phrased that right. God, I was like having a moment there. I couldn't fucking say words. All right, we're going to start painting ferns. All right, here, here's the boring part of the stream, guys. Hope you enjoy. It's going to be this basically going to be our life for the next like two hours. Um, the bunny. I'll find other shit to save your time. Exactly. Ryan, you're basically the personification of like. Uh. Uh, like like an audience for a video game you're basically my like litmus test for how i react to when people ask me to add stuff to my video game it's like we want this we want this like shut the fuck up <laughs> shut, shut up shut up shut up 
It's okay, Ryan. You're like my you're, you're my litmus test for how I react to that kind of stuff. So I appreciate your uh, your input. Plus, you're like your geo cool guy. So fewer random bunny victims. Um, I I think if I'm gonna do at least one encounter, it's definitely the bunny. I'll probably add the bunny back for this for this update. I do at least want to have one thing to show people, you know. And plus, if we get this done by April, it'll be a good excuse for the Easter update, you know. Gentle maniac. Amazing. Would you like to uh, talk to the class about uh, your post uh, about the, the Japanese people liking Hasman Hotel? I would love them to know more about that. I, I, I was very fascinated by that post. I was like, that's kind of cool. Would you like to talk? Would you like to talk to the class about that while while Claw mindlessly paints foliage? Um, because like I found that super interesting that there was just like that like they that I didn't I didn't realize that might have been like a big thing over in Japan like Hasman Hotel you know. I mean, I already had people boycotting my map because I don't add the green pipes back. That's mainly Sam, though. Sam was the one that did that, but it was really funny. <sighs> Maybe I'll add the green pipes back. I don't know. We'll see. The fast teleport system is still really basic right now. There's a fan base that absolutely loves it. Oh, that's cool. I mean, I guess that makes sense, yeah. I just found it so interesting because like it's like you know a lot of people over here in the west really like anime and then like you look at like japan and there's like people in japan that really like like western cartoons and stuff vc japan tool just we can learn history yeah you mentioned that group yeah whenever happened that guy that listener something's not something absolutely not usual for japanese they know very little about husband only if you've seen it but they all more or less understand english and they are very many other japan institutes who speak english and they absolutely love me Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's like something new, you know, like, oh, like a like something refreshing, something new, you know, kind of makes things more interesting. I actually was having a conversation yesterday with my friend Sam about like public Im like public improv and stuff, because my friend because I was rewatching some of Sam's old videos and he did like he used to go into like publics more as like shaggy and kind of like initiate like like, like he would do like improv bits and in public instances as like as like shaggy um but he told me that nowadays it's just like a lot harder to do that because people aren't really receptive to it as much if that makes any sense someone who on the discord i was starstruck when i saw you there with the full yeah <laughs> that must have been a nice feeling to hear someone say that like oh thank you i really appreciate i do my best you know I do my best. You're you're good at you're good at playing the character. You're you're pretty good at playing uh, Alistair, honestly. If I had to be completely honest. No, I I don't think I've met someone that's like as committed to the to the bit kind of thing, you know. So, aside from your other friend uh, Slappy, I believe. Slappy, there's one hundred percent. Call you friend. What map? Pipes are yeah. You know, but sorry, I'll just want to jump back to what I was saying about Sam. Yeah, no, like, I think he talked about him trying to do stuff in, like, murder, and a lot of the time it was just, like, e-boys and e-girls that just weren't really receptive to it. And he talked about how, like, he's not really good at, like, initiating the con the improv and stuff. He's more like someone has to come up to him and, like, mention something, and then he can, like, bounce off of that. And he just said that it was just, it was just harder these days to do that because not many people really like initiating that kind of stuff i i kind of don't know if that's necessarily true i think it might just be like the places you go might not be the most like receptive of that kind of stuff i think there's absolutely still people who would reciprocate like improv like that totally i think there's still a lot of people like that i don't think that's gone away i think it's just like there's so many more places now that are filled with people that it's like it might be harder to find people like that because it, it's not as like tight knit as it used to be. But I, I still think you can, you can totally find uh, people out there. As else, I basically just like start a conversation by commenting on whether they're oh my dear sir, what a fine day, quite wonderful. Like all the other mindless souls. Ah, uh, true. I no, I just mean like, and in his case, it was like he, like he, he would have to be the one to like initiate it, initiate it, and that was kind of what the problem was. It wasn't that like it wasn't that people were coming up to him and like you know mentioning, oh my god, Shaggy, hey, what's up, bud? 
Um, you know what I mean? Like, that just wasn't, like, as prominent, I guess. Yeah, like, big trees, dude. They're pretty cool. Yeah, like, it's, it's just harder these days, I guess, in terms of... I, I still think you just have to find the right place, you know? But it's also just, like, getting lucky finding the right people, honestly, because... I mean, you could go into, like, a black cat, and you could probably find some people that are pretty receptive to it that are like, oh, this is really cool, it's really fun. But then you're absolutely going to find... Uh, you're absolutely going to find people that just don't care. Um, and I, I think my biggest advice is just read the room, really. Like, you can usually, like, read the room and kind of know if, like, people might be receptive to it. If they're just having a casual conversation, they may not want to participate. So, yeah. Else, here's a character I really like RP because of his voice, his way of speaking. Yeah, exactly. Mm hmm. What a two guys would be an anime fangirl. Alistair fangirl. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm glad she likes it. That's good. You probably bring a lot of fun to that group, so. I misspelled. It's okay. Don't worry. I, I, get, I get what you were trying to say, so. I, I get the gist, so. You know, I, I think I was telling Sam, like, it'd be cool if you tried doing, like, the VR set, VR chat, like, improv, like, public stuff again, like, get back into it. But I know he's, he said it's just difficult to do that these days, um, and I feel bad for him. Um, I know he has fun when he, when he actually finds, like, a good instance and stuff, but he, he just, I think it's just a motivation issue, really, more than anything. It's just, like, yeah. It, it's just not the same, I guess, as it was back in, like, 2018, 2019 when he did it more often. So it could be kind of difficult to get back into it. So. It, oh, by the way, Sam's birthday is a. Uh, is this Monday, by the way. I, I, I totally, I, uh, he has an event for it. I think he's, I think he's just going to do like putt putt and VR chat or something. But I might join him for that on Monday. So if you see me in VR chat on Monday, uh, it's probably because I'm joining Sam for putt putt for his birthday. Because I know he, uh, he's probably going to do putt-putt, so. God, I sound so, like, defeated when I say putt-putt. It is especially funny because I am the only person there without one of those typical anime avatars, like, you know. Oh, yeah, like, everyone's basically, like, in an anime-styled avatar, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that doesn't really surprise me too much, because especially for probably the Japanese communities, like, a lot of the people there are primarily using anime avatars. That's just, like, the norm. So seeing someone not in an anime avatar is probably, like, an outlier. So, I mean, look at my sessions. Like, a lot of people that come to my innkeeping are in anime avatars. Well, actually, it's kind of not true. I mean, I mean, there's a good chunk of people that are in anime avatars, but we do have people that come that aren't in anime avatars. So it's not like it's, it's uncommon. It's not like it's entirely uncommon or anything like that, so... Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're you're 100 right. It, it is indeed the most common style in VR chat. Um, well, there was a time when I mean, like, e yeah, even in the early days of VR chat, like, I because I remember because I was there. Uh, yeah, like in the early days of VR chat, yeah, like, yeah, like anime did definitely establish itself pretty quickly. Um, because you had like MMD models, you could just port over using Cat's pl plugin pretty quickly. So, uh, the accessibility of like anime models became pretty was pretty easy was pretty like straightforward once cats was added i would honestly argue that cats the cats plugin is like 100 percent the reason why anime became so much more popular in vr chat because you could actually port the mmd models over pretty easily with the cats plugin like quite literally it, it's it's i think it's definitely yeah, that's one of the reasons why but but that was before like you know booth was a thing and people could like buy avatars that were like preset and stuff um mmd models kind of reign supreme during that time i don't think custom vr chat models like that was sold became common until at least 2020 I, maybe 2019 i think it was 2020 though like i think it was definitely around like 2019 2020 that that became more common e-girls and e-boys other uh i mean 
I would kind of say they're still basically anime. I mean, they, they have like the eyes and all that stuff that still look very similar, but they are basically their own like sub genre of it, I would say. Um, it's, it's like an amalgamation, basically. Like, yeah, like it's not necessarily anime, but you can tell that it's, it's got like its, its roots in anime. Like it's, I, I would agree with you and say that it's not necessarily anime. Like I would agree with you on that. But I won't deny that you can tell that it's like genealogy in a way comes from anime. You know what I mean? Like it's the source is originally anime before it got like turned into something else. If that makes like any sense whatsoever. Like, you know what, you know what I'm trying to like say? Like that kind of stuff. You know, um... I actually remember when anime was wasn't really like acknowledged by the VR chat devs for a very long time. Like nowadays, like you look at the VR chat devs and it's like, yeah, they're all a lot of them are anime avatars and it's like it's pretty common now. But like back then, anime was actually not really like you didn't really see the VR chat devs as anime avatars at all. Even Tupper, like because Tupper Tupper, I think, has always used like a like a Cherno like variant avatar, even when he was casual in VR chat. But when he became part of the dev team, he he stopped, he wasn't using that doing like the actual like you know doing like his public displays as the community head he actually used like one of the default avatars because like being an anime avatar was not really i wouldn't say it was taboo for the dev team but it wasn't really like a widely distributed practice i guess if that makes any sense like i don't think it was until 2020 that they actually became more open to like being anime avatars and stuff it's it's interesting because they, they kind of like fully embrace that side of vr chat at that point so and i think it was a good thing so i think, I think it was a great a good thing back in the day i was still only desktop i always rp as an ls and then it's slappy who immediately insulted me for doing a bad impression who did not oh okay because that was very toxic comment back then oh, they're already, they're always insulted. it's having just yeah i don't have fun yeah I think in that case it's like you shouldn't um you shouldn't demean someone for having a bad impression it's like you know they're trying the best give them some props there that's why whenever like someone tries to role play a character at the end i always i don't like i try not to insult them if they don't do a really good impression i try to kind of like play along with it <laughs> so that kind of stuff but yeah i, I would say like like back then, yeah, my first ever VR chat screenshot was actually slapping me standing in front of a mirror. What was my first VR chat screenshot? Can I find it? I, I know, okay, my first VR chat screenshot, uh, I think was a panoramic that, like, my earliest screenshot I can find. So the earliest screenshot on my computer is, uh, I can actually put it, pull it up on the screen. Um, Okay, this is the concept art, but that's not what we're looking at. Sorry, I know that's the concept art I showed you guys earlier. This screenshot, this one right here, this is... So this is, this is a panoramic. Uh, so this, this screenshot right here, this is dated to December 20th, 2017. I believe that this is technically the first screenshot I ever took in VR chat because I didn't know how the camera stuff worked. And I think I accidentally took a panoramic So you can kind of tell how old this is because this is the old hub and everything. But this was the first screenshot I took in VR chat. Te technically, technically the first screenshot. Um, if I try to look for like the earliest, like actual screenshot I took, it would probably be like, oh gosh, where is the? I don't think there is a pan. Yeah, I don't. I think they got rid of the panoramic camera because back then it used to just be like a button that you would just like press and it would do a panoramic screenshot like this. Okay, so um, here's another image. So this image I'm going to show you guys is dated to. Let me find it. Uh, So this image is dated to January 4th, 2018. So this would technically be, um, this would, this would technically be my first actual screenshot I took. Um, this is like the first actual screenshot that I took, not a panoramic, um, because 
I did not know how to um I did not know how to take screenshots until like January 2018. So this is technically my oldest screenshot if you don't count the panoramic. So God man, back then I didn't know what I I had like I had like a friends group I was a part of, but not really like a close friends group. Um so like I was basically on my own just I was public world hopping. I, actually, I was in VR. I think I was in VR. Actually, I was in VR at this point. Yeah, I did have VR. Um, that was a, that was an old one. Oh man, I I, I have some old screenshots. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to look back at some of these and just be like, wow, that was, that was like a long ass time ago. Um, what's another old screenshot? Oh yeah. Um. Oh jeez. His VR that was so banged up that he had to be, that he held it with tape. It might sound like Alistair. He's amazing. Oh yeah, uh, I can show you guys like the earliest like Wanderer screenshot. Actually, well, this isn't technically the earliest Wanderer screenshot, but I did take this in like February. Oh god, dude, I forgot how old. Wait, wait, I'm gonna show you this. This, this is my. This is like one of my first iterations of my avatar. This one right here. Oh my god, I forgot how old this avatar. This is this is this avatar right here. Uh this is this photo is from February 21st, 2018. This avatar was the first iteration of my my avatar that I ever made. This avatar right here. I still have it uploaded by the way. Um and now you're a girl. I could change myself. I could change back to a guy, don't worry. Um Yeah, but but if you're curious where the hair color comes from, it comes from this avatar. Because uh, the the hair, um, the hair was originally an MMD hair pack, and it was like a Miku. It was like Miku's blue hair, if you know Miku, Hatsune Miku. Um, and what I did was I I tried to I colored the hair like in GIMP to be brown, and it came out as like this brown shade, and that's basically why I still have this brown shade. So if you're curious why my hair is this specific color, it's because of this avatar right here. So I don't know. I just wanted to show you guys that. So hope you guys like that. Has been hotel. Yeah, has been hotel came out. Uh, yeah, about six years ago. Yeah, it'd be like 2018 or something like that. Well, that was the pilot though, and then it was only recently that the actual series came out fully on Amazon TV, I believe. I actually watched it. It was pretty good. I could argue the pacing could be a bit better. Like I would love more like episodes between that kind of elaborated on the characters more. But I think it worked out. Otherwise, I think it was okay for what they what they had. You know, it worked out pretty okay. I mean, it's pretty okay. I like I like the show. I I, I had I didn't really have any grievances with it. I also watched uh, Haluva Boss as well, and I really liked Hel Haluva Boss. Actually, I would probably argue I like Haluva Boss more than Hasman Hotel. Um, personally, um. But they're still pretty good, regardless. Like, I, st I still like both of them, so. Yeah, the, uh, the, the person who made them, uh, Vivian, I think her name's Vivian, right? Vivian Medrano or something? Uh, I remember watching some of her, like, older animation videos from, like, the early 2010s. Like, the one of the music videos. It's like, hard beats to the beat of the drum, you know, like that song? Yeah. Your first percent, you know, my yeah, like I said, my first picture was a panoramic because I just accidentally pressed the button, so that's how I got my oldest screenshot, which does confirm that the earliest I played VR chat was December 20th, 2018, uh, 2017, which I believe, which I remember actually because that was the day that I did start playing, yeah. Because, like, one I was just playing World of Warcraft and then I saw videos on YouTube about uh, about VR chat popping up on my feed, um, so I looked and watched the videos i enjoyed it i went to go check out vr chat on steam to see if it was on steam i was just curious it was on steam i was like oh that's cool but it's vr only but then i saw that you could play it on desktop on the steam page and i was like oh i could play this right now it's free um what do you think about van life youtubers are you talking about the guy that you mentioned to me the one that lives inside of his van you mentioned this story to me already you, you told me about the guy that lives in his van yeah, I thought it was cool. I thought it was. I've never watched him, but I I know of him because you told me about him. 
I thought it was neat. Um, I think it's really cool. I mean, there's like a certain level of freedom that you get from just being able to travel, but at the same time, like if your fan fucking dies, you're kind of just stranded. I think I think it's like an interesting trade off between having a stable place to live and actually just being free, you know. So. Yeah, you told me about that. He has a, a gaming setup on his PC, he has a computer. He has a gaming setup, and he's got like Starlink for internet connection. Yeah, so he can basically just play on the go. Yeah, you told me about that. I don't know if I'd, uh, I don't know if I'd be willing to do that because I like having a set place to live. Like, I, I guess like I like having a home base, like a stable home base. Like being in a living in a van does sound cool. But I do like just having a house, um, like living in a house personally. Um, it was controversial back in the day, but that was kind of been. I think Starlink's cool. I think it's actually really neat because it's like you have a bunch of these like small satellites that are like orbiting the Earth, and they give you internet access to people that are like living in rural areas. I think it's actually a really cool thing. Um, I don't. I mean, like you, you can you can make arguments about the company that made it, but. I think the actual technology itself is actually really cool. So, I mean, like, SpaceX is also really cool as well. Like, even though, you know, the guy at the head is kind of fucking weird, um, I still think the actual SpaceX itself is actually really good. Um, like, it's SpaceX itself is actually really neat. Um, they're actually doing really good stuff. Like, the rocket launches are actually really cool. And they have, like, the whole... I mean, they kind of pioneered the whole, like, bringing a rocket back to earth to reuse it kind of thing which is fucking amazing because now you don't have to like spend so much money like making a new rocket for every launch you can actually just reuse a rocket um which is crazy to think about it's from star like yeah yeah you told me that yeah you know i mean it, it sounds really neat like I like that kind of freedom does sound very like appealing, I would say. Also, I think I'm just going to make like You think I should make this whole stretch like a grassy area? Kind of I kind of wonder if I should make this all like a grassy area, maybe. I kind of want to. Um Well, actually no. Actually no, I won't because I'll keep it a forest. If I'm going to make it grassy, I want to make it flat. Like I said, having having that kind of freedom does sound really appealing. Being able to just, like, travel where you want to and stuff. But I'm the kind of guy where it's like, I, I do like having stability. I do like having a place to, like, just go back to and relax. And I know that you could do that with the van, but at the same time, like, I don't know. I think it's like, I'm not the kind of person that can really do that. Um, I used, when I was a kid, uh... I used to, like, when I was in, I think I had a, a phase when I was in, like, high school where <sighs> build a larger kind of tent people in the East live in. He's going to make it modernize with eating and stuff and grow his own food and also chickens for eggs. He's playing a Starling Ranch. Well, good luck to him. I'm not committed enough to do stuff like that. I'm, I'm very much, like, I'm, I'm fine just having a house or an apartment. I'm good. Yeah, no, I, I like I like having a house. I'm good. I, I used to, well, like what I was gonna say was um I used to I used to have a phase in high school that I went through where I was really into the idea of vagabonding. And if you don't know what a vagabond is, um a vagabond A vagabond is a person who wanders from place to place without a home or a job. Like, I, I was really... It, it's basically what you said, like, the, the guy living in the van kind of thing. Um, but I was very much into the idea of, like, just exploring the world when I graduated high school. Like, instead of going to college, I would just, like, travel. Um, I, I mean, I never did, obviously, but uh, I was very into the idea of doing that um, for a while. I even bought, like, a book that I still have in my closet for talking about vagabonds and stuff. Yeah, yeah, reality hits you, and then you're like, okay, well, I have to pay for this, and it's like, I can't, I can't just, like, travel without money, like, 
you know, at some point it's like, okay, well, I need to, you know, I need to have shelter, I need to have food, and food isn't, you know, food isn't, you know, free. You kind of have to pay for it somehow. Um, you know, reality. To, I mean, the people that can travel usually, like, either have, like, a decent amount of savings or they have, like, self-sufficiency. It's like, okay, maybe they grow their own food or they have, like, a good amount of money saved up that they can just, like, get, like, groceries that'll last them for a long time. Um, and stuff if i was ever going to do world exploration i would probably just do a vacation i would probably just have like a two-week vacation i do or something where like i go to a place and i you know i explore i kind of just like you know visit like a location I, I i would rather still have a place to come back to because you know i like I like my computer or like gaming and stuff and I, I know like all the van thing you could just do it in your van it's like no i don't really i don't really think i want to game in a van sounds cool on paper but I'm not really the kind of person that would deal with that. Or they have some kind of work they can do anyway. Yeah. Or you can like work anywhere no matter what. So you just have money coming in regardless and you can just travel. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, essentially. Um, it'd be nice if I could find a job that was like that where it's like I, I wouldn't have to take phone calls and I could just like work on tickets and stuff on a laptop because then it's like, okay, well, I could, as long as I have an internet connection, I could just go wherever I want. Uh, so, nothing is free these days. Yeah, nothing is free these days. Yeah, it comes with the territory. You know, I've been, I've been like, I've been applying to places for a job, and only one of them actually responded and declined my application, which was very nice of them to do. I was very happy that they actually responded to my application at all, so I was very happy about that at least, even though they declined me. Uh, but I've been applying to more places recently, so. I think that's part of why it's dying out. You can no longer just get a part-time job instantly. You need a bunch of identification and stuff to get hired. Yeah. I mean, I look specifically for full-time jobs at this point. Because um, part-time jobs are kind of meh. Like, I, the only kind of part-time jobs I can get are, like, the manual labor ones. You can't really get, like, a customer support part-time job, so. And they'd say, yes, sit down. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to get a job, it's like, it's not like, unless it's like a job that's specifically a temporary one where it's like, okay, you'll be working here for like a year or so, and that's as long as we need you, then yeah, they expect you to just stay there for the rest of your life. So it's kind of gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, if you want like a, a job, it's not like you can say, I'm only going to work here for a few weeks. Like, they're just going to say no, because they don't want, they don't want someone that works there for a few weeks. They want someone that's going to stick around for a long time, which I mean, is fair enough. You know, some jobs need stuff like that, so. I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to do an Australian vacation trip, um, but I'm I'm still kind of planning that out, kind of debating about it. Like I do want to, I want to do it, but I don't think now is the best time for me to do it. So, um, I do want to go to Australia. That was one of that was like my big vacation trip. I wanted to do was uh, Australia. I think before I do Australia, I'll probably go to Washington D.C. again by myself. Um, because I do actually want to go visit the uh, National Natural History Museum again, and I also want to go see the Space Museum. So I'm my next vacation will probably be in Washington D.C. All things considered. So oh, I want to go to Australia. I I think it'd be fun. I mean, yeah, it's it, I mean the, the stereotypes about like dangerous animals and stuff is a real thing, but. I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. I mean, there's thing, there's creatures that live here where I live, live that can be deadly, like you know, like rattlesnakes or poisonous spiders. Like I mean, black widows and brown recluses. Not nearly as many as in Australia, obviously, but I mean, you're talking about like a whole continent. Like there are there are snakes that live like west of me that are like you know dangerous and stuff and scorpions, but they don't live near where I live. So it just depends on where you go in Australia, I guess. You know, but the Australia trip is just going to be rough because, like, I have to go basically across the entire world, like, literally the opposite side of the planet. Because if you if you stick a thumb, if you stick a pin through the Earth where I'm standing right now, it'll pop up like right next to Australia. So I I literally have to go like across the entire planet just to get there. 
which is like a monumental task to get there. Like it, it, it would basically take me an entire day of just travel, like by plane to get there. Like, so I would be spending like an entire, a whole day just getting to Australia. So that's the first hurdle, obviously. Um, so yeah, like an, gonna be a nightmare to get there. And then I have to plan out like what I'm gonna do. So it's like, okay, I can't just go there and then ex just, do nothing like i need to make sure i have like an apartment i mean I, 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 a hotel or something um that's not too expensive and then i need to be like okay how many days am i sitting here how do i get to this location do i like rent a car i can't really drive in australia i mean i can drive here but it's like okay well i don't have a license in australia so i can't really drive i guess i could just have like an uber or something take me to a location if i wanted to go there but I mean, that's going to be expensive in and of itself. So it's like, yeah, I got I to gotta like package all the finances and stuff. Like, how do I, how do I spend money in Australia? Because I have USD. Do I have to like convert it to Australian dollars or does it just go through my bank and they, it automatically converts when they send it over? I, I don't know. Like that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, I don't really know how that whole process works. So. cat's like what the hell what are you doing human so where are we oh how far have we painted so far how much foliage have we painted so far we've painted actually quite a bit so far actually well about like this whole stretch so got quite a quite a ways to go obviously but i mean at this point we're just going to be foliage painting for the rest of the stream at least until 7 p.m. and then I'm going to go. I am going to actually stop streaming at 7, which is in like 40 minutes, because I do want to go make some hamburger helper for dinner before uh, a friend of mine streams. So. I am the voice and I gained sentience. What are you doing, human? What are you doing, human? I am, I am foliage painting the voice in my head. <laughs> beep, boop, beep, 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 beep. Not compatible. <laughs> Oh man, sorry, I my nose stiffly. You know, I want to do, I actually, there was a certain job that I applied to, uh, and if I actually did get that job, then I could actually work that job while doing my vacation to Australia, as long as I had like a laptop and an internet connection. But sadly, I'm, I haven't heard anything back from that in quite a while. Uh, so I might, I might reapply there. Because it's already been like fucking three months, I think, since I applied there, and I'm like, if you haven't responded to my application in three months, then I'm assuming that it's just a no-go, so. Like, I would assume by now I'd hear something, so. Like I said, that's the one thing I hate about applying to jobs and stuff is when they don't actually, if they, if they don't hire, like, if they, if they close the job application or they don't won't want to hire you, they just don't send a correspondence saying that, oh, we're not hiring anymore, or, oh, we're we've you know we've declined your offer i mean i guess they would actually this job would actually email me if they didn't want my if they didn't you know want to hire me but at the same time it's like well if the job application if you're still accepting job applications then shouldn't you be looking at them actively and like shouldn't you like tell me if you're not hiring anymore then i don't have to worry about waiting Ugh, i don't know man it's rough job searching is rough Sometimes you find a good needle in a haystack kind of situation, and it's very nice, but it would be a pain in the butt sometimes. I've been thinking about uh, an apartment actually opened up in my town recently that's actually kind of affordable, and I was thinking about getting it, but at the same time, like, uh, I don't know if I want to get that right now, because I did want to save up for a house, and then I could just skip the whole apartment process, but I'm still conflicted about that. I'm not going to do anything right now, though, until I actually get money coming in again. So, I'm not going to make any risky financial choices, you know? But yeah, no, vacation stuff. Uh, yeah, no, if I do another vacation, it's probably going to be Washington, D.C. Uh, although I might wait till... I mean, I might, may or may not wait to go to Washington until, like, things calm down a little bit here in the kind of in the United States. I, I think it's a little bit hectic right now in, in the States considering it's an election election cycle, so I think I might I think I might hold off on going to DC until 
after everything calms down, so. You know, I'd rather not be, like, caught up in the middle of, like, a fucking protest or something, you know? I remember when, um, I went to Washington, D.C. with my friends, and, um, we did that vacation, and there was a protest going on, and my friend wanted to go to it, and I, and I, I said I wouldn't go. Like, I just, I just said I'm not going. It wasn't because I disagreed with the protest, it was because I just don't go to protest. Like, I, I do not feel safe. <laughs> I do not feel safe going to a protest. And th these days, I just, I just don't feel safe, like, doing that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like at any point in time, something bad could happen, and then I'm going to get, like, blamed for it or something. I'm just like, I, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm good, thank you. Unless it's something, like, that directly affects me, I'm probably not going to bother. I'm just, I'm just not interested in getting involved. I'd rather watch from the sidelines. You know what I mean? Maybe that's just a me thing. I don't know. I'm just paranoid, that's all. What can I say? Then again, I'm, I'm, I don't really make public outings anyway, so like I just don't participate in that kind of stuff in general because I just don't go outside. So... I just, I just wouldn't rather not, so. Although, speaking of which, I gotta, I gotta do my taxes soon, actually. I have all my tax papers right here, I just haven't done my taxes yet, I gotta go do that later. Do you guys want me to stream doing my taxes? <laughs> I'm not gonna do that, but. <laughs> I can show you guys how the process works in America. This is what the tax process is like. In the country. You know, I heard that other countries have it to where, like, they just do your taxes for you and they deduct out of it so you don't have to, like, file your taxes yourself. And I'm like, why the freaking flip does my country not do that? Like, seriously. Why, why do I have to do my... Like, why, why can't you just, like, automate this and just fucking... I don't know if I can... <laughs> I mean, it's not too hard to do your taxes. It's just like a, like you, like if you have a job, they'll they'll send you the appropriate papers before tax season, uh, and then you just have to plug in the information, and that's it. And it's like, okay, well, why why do I gotta do this? Why can't you do this for me? My red hot American blood is like, why do I gotta pay taxes? This is this is sucks. The last time I went to D.C. was coincidentally the same day they lit the Christmas tree in the National Mall area. Apparently a protest or something ran in during the ceremony. I arrived hours later, though, unaware of what happened. I'm like, oh. I, it's not even, like, it's not even just, like, a disruptive person, White, that I'm scared of. It's fucking just someone, you know, like, all the fucking... Yeah, I don't want to say it, like, out loud, because I don't know if it's, like, TOS, but it's, like, all the, like, you know, shootings and stuff that happen. I just don't, I just, like... I'm just kind of paranoid about going to events like that because you you always hear about like some crazy guy just saying, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so it's like I'm I'm good I don't think I wanna I don't think I wanna deal with that I mean I'll I'll do stuff in like my town but so because we trust our company so true god dang government <laughs> uh, the government. The government. Oh, the goddamn government. <laughs> I mean, I'll I'll go to public events sometimes. Like, uh, my town has like a local fair, and I I never really worry about the local fair having any issues because like I, I like why would someone do that, you know? But like with bigger like with places that are more like like known, I guess like like either a protest or like a you know something like that. It just I don't know. But in general, I just I just don't really participate in that kind of stuff. I I'll watch from like the sidelines. I'm good, thank you. By the way, you can see how how, how tedious this process is. I have to manually do this, so it like takes a while. So 
we're gonna kind of keep painting the ferns until we get like at least past the building at least past this hill and then we'll start painting the terrain and that should should be a little bit faster and then if we take a we fill in a gap here with like one of these trees a video that made me shake I actually okay wait shaking from laughter or shaking from like terror like like I'm like oh this is like a horrible video like what the hell why'd you send this to me or is it like haha this is like the funniest video I think I've ever seen oh from terror oh oh well, that's a that's a that's not good is it bad I mean you don't have to send you you, you don't have to send it to me but hopefully it wasn't too bad. Called Willy Wonka makes an Oompa Loompa. Wait, I won't watch it, but I'll look up the title and see what what you're talking about. One sec. Oh, okay. I I see. Okay. Oh, it's got like a million views. Wow. Eight days ago. Huh. Uh, I'm good. I don't think I'll watch that, but. Hey, at least I know it exists. Dude, I was thinking, I've been, like, I was talking to Sam last night about the unknown. You guys remember that whole fiasco, the Glasgow Wonka instance and the fucking unknown? I, I, I love the, the unknown, like, concept so much. Like, the fucking evil chocolate maker in the walls fucking cracked me up so much. <laughs> I was talking about, I was talking to him about that because I was like, that'd be such a good, like, monster idea. Like, uh, a mirror dwelling monster. Like, just, I just thought that was really interesting. You guys know, have you guys heard about the, oh, wait, wait. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Just look up the unknown Willy Wonka and you'll know what I'm talking about, so. I think they, there was even talks of, like, them wanting to make a movie out of that or something, and I'm just like, oh boy. <laughs> Called Bloody Mary? Oh, I know, but, like, no, well, well, Bloody Mary isn't, like, an evil chocolate maker in the walls. <laughs> be, be honest, be honest. Have you actually gone up to a mirror and said Bloody Mary three times? Be honest. I never did. I was too scared. I was a little bitch baby. You've not seen the- oh my god, you've not seen the unknown- wait, can I find the tweet? Um, I'm gonna find- I'm gonna find the tweet real quick and I'll show it to you, one sec. I think I put it in here? Yeah, yeah, it's like random memes, yeah, yeah. I- I- I'm gonna show you my favorite meme from the- from the- the stuff. Wait, let me find it real quick. Uh... Yeah, here it is. Oh, I love this meme so much, dude. It's great. Yeah, it was a guy. It was um, it was a, it was a guy in a mask holding a mirror. Yeah. Wait. Oh, I don't think I could show this because I don't have like a browser. Here, I'll put it. I'll put it in the memes channel of the Discord. Okay, in in my Discord, I'll put it in memes. This is like. This is my favorite. This is my favorite meme video from this. It, it, I fucking love it. It's great. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. Yeah, no, the TLDR context for where the unknown comes from. It came from a Willy Wonka like like event that this guy hosted in like Glasgow, Ireland, in Glasgow, which is like in Ireland, I think. Um, and the whole the whole controversy about it was like the guy was using like AI images generated, and it was basically a scam. Like it was literally just a scam. So like the parents brought their kids to what they expected to be like a Willy Wonka event, and it turned out to be just like this like fucking empty warehouse like and one of the um one of the one of the entities there was a uh was the unknown so like um the guy playing Willy Wonka would take the kids down this like aisle and then like behind like a mirror this the, it was like it was I think it was a 16 year old girl that was playing the character but um she would be she was in the unknown outfit and she would like reach out to try to grab the kids because she was the evil, as they describe, she was the evil chocolate maker in the walls. And I'm just like, 
<laughs> That's such a fucking great concept. The evil chocolate maker in the walls. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? What do you mean he's in the walls? He's holding a mirror. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It, 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 was, it was just really an interesting idea, to say the least, so... I love it, dude. It's so good. I've watched the video again. I'm just cracking up watching it. Oh, it's so... It's like, even, like, that, that tweet itself is actually just really good in general. Like, the guy who did the animation for it. Like, I was just phenomenal in general. It's like a fucking JRPG. What is that? It's the unknown! <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. If, um... Would it be a bad thing to use an AI image generator to come up with a concept for a monster and then you build on that and you make it from scratch, like, yourself as a 3D model? Like, would that be a bad thing? Because, like, I, I was thinking about doing something like that where, like, I kind of just, like, use an AI image generator to just kind of do some conceptualization of, like, a monster design and then I would make it myself, like, from scratch. But I didn't know if, like if people would hate that because i know like people's thoughts on ai is very much like very negative um and i feel like if i did that then people would be like why didn't you just like pay someone to make a concept for you and it's like okay well i didn't want to because i don't want i didn't want to spend money <laughs> i don't know i was thinking about that like is it worth the controversy to to deal with that this is in relation to my VR chat map idea, by, by the way. I was thinking, I was like, I was trying, I was coming up with like monster concepts, and I was like, I wonder if the AI generator would maybe help me with like, kind of just spitballing ideas. Um, so I don't know. Concepts are probably best used in AI generation. My name is Focus. You mentioned this piece on trying to... Yeah. I think if you're using it for like a, like for conceptualizing, um, I think it's, I think it's fine. Um, like, I don't see why there's an issue with me using it to silly, silly slumber party me. And the it's Ryan's trying to change the conversation. He's got like sweat on his brow. He's like, oh God. Walk along. I'm doing your. I'm doing your favor here. Let's change the conversation. <laughs> let's let's change the conversation. Walk along. You don't want to go down this rabbit hole. I pull the strings. I am the global wub dub dub the wub. Dude, do you guys remember that meme? Oh my god, does anyone remember the global wub wub dub dub? The, the, no, not that. It's a. Uh, glubba lub dub, dub what was the hell does that mean for 2018? The, I am the glubba lub dub dub, the wubba double, oh my god, I remember, dude, that's so, that's, I remember that. Oh, that was such a fucking 2018 meme, dude. I remember seeing avatars in the VR chat of it, too. I was like, what the? I am the wubba lub dub dub, the wubba lub, oh god. <laughs> oh. I just had a fucking 2018 dude that if there is if ever there was a 2018 meme it would definitely be the the glub the glub lub whatever the hell his name was I don't fucking know uh I am the glub -a lub dub dub the wub I keep wanting to say like wubba lub -a dub dub but that's from Rick and Morty you know I god I really I really just want to keep saying glub -a lub -a dub dub eh, Morty eh, Morty <laughs> Hey, Moody. Hey, Moody. Moody. Check memes channel? Okay, I'll check the memes. One sec. Wait. Yeah, there it is. Oh, wait. Delightful. Really delightful. I am the glug glub 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 glub. I love books. And this basement is a true Trevor trove. And he starts, like, the music starts coming on, he starts, like, dancing, he's just like, 
uh, uh, uh. I am the glob glow glob go glob the scrubble lubble double lubble glove lubble lub lub I will love scrimble glibble kind I am the yeast of thoughts in mine double lubble double glob glob gubba hubba gubba glob double lubba I don't even know what the fuck he's saying double hubba double double lubba gubba gum glob double 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 that's what he's just he's saying gibberish he's literally just saying gibberish he's like Oh, Ryan, Brian, did you see the, um, did you see the meme I posted, uh, uh, before the one that Eve posted? The, 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 the five guys are sucking dick in Munich, Germany. What does that sign actually say? Uh, it sounds really funny, though. It, it's, we're sucking dick. <laughs> I tried to say the lyrics and my furniture started floating. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Amazing. Here it, Ryan, Ryan. Here it. We're shucking dick. We're tail dirt five guys family. Dude, I can't believe they're sucking dick. That's crazy. I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess it's twenty twenty four. You know, kind of normalized at this point. You know, sucking dick, but. Don't be racist, I am a building. No, I don't know what that video is. I've never heard of that. Don't be racist, I am a building. Oh, he posted something again. Oh, what the hell is this video? <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm not even going to watch the full video. I already, like, 10 seconds in, I already get the gist of it. <laughs> the guy's just jaw just dropped onto the ground. Just like, huh? That is pretty funny, though. This is a freaking random video. Anyway, getting off that topic. Got to spice up the, the conversations while we do boring stuff. What was that thing about witches? Witches? Um. Witches, witches, witches. Oh, oh, um. No, we were talking about, uh, we were talking about, uh, AI art. Um. It's, yeah, witch hunt as a metaphor. Yeah, yeah, it, it was just a metaphor for, like, the amount of aggression at AI art, which ha some of it's justified, but a good amount of it is definitely, like, you guys can just calm down. Like, you don't need to be crazy about every single instance of AI art. It's like, I know that there's a lot of, like, people that use it for bad stuff, and that's fair. You can call them out for that, but... If somebody's just using it as like a like basic concept stuff, I, I, like, I think one of the weirder ones, uh, was like i think there was a video game that used like ai art to generate like some posters and stuff for the game um like like for the in game like so in game there'd be like a random poster as like scenery that was like ai generated or something and like people were like like saying don't buy this game because of this and i'm like i mean is that really is it really that bad i don't know it's it's just so like weird I always try to direct people at um my friend Silent, uh my friend Silent's tweet thread about AI art that they made when the stuff was first starting to pop up because she did a really good job at like explaining what AI art actually does. Um, so because a lot of people kind of misconstrued it, it's like I I don't know I'm I'm not really the one that should should really talk about that kind of stuff because I'm not really experienced on it and i i just don't i i mean i know it's about as much as anyone else but good thread and I, I like linking it occasionally when people talk about that i'm like yeah you should probably read this oh 
Oh yeah, a laws about AI and stuff. Yeah, I think that's been talked about here as well. But um, I think there was like something about like copyright in regards to it or something. I don't know. Like, I mean, now that it's actually like a proven technology, it's like yeah, they're, they're kind of like yeah, we probably need to make some like laws or something about this. So I think there's like stuff being worked on or something on those lines. So I don't know. I mean, I think AI art is just, like, it's fun to use, like, for conceptualizing and stuff. I don't think there's any problem with that. I think it's, like, once you start um, using it to, like, replace, like, an actual artist, like, I don't know. Or, like, people that, um, I don't know. It's it's such a weird thing. I, I don't know. It's, like, I don't hate the technology. I think it's really neat. But it feels like the whole... It feels like at this point it's just like, ugh. Wait, the thread? You want me to link the thread? Wait, uh, I gotta find it first. Uh, I have it bookmarked. One sec, I can I can pull it up here. Yeah, my my friend Silent uh made a pretty solid thread, um way back when the AI stuff was starting to pop up. And I, I look, I do, I, I, it's actually pretty good. I think it does a really great job at kind of like explaining what it actually is and what it actually does. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find it. It's like way back here. I have a bunch of bookmarks. I'm sorry. Further back, further back, further back. God, if how it's supposed to be like one of my first bookmarks I made. Sorry, one sec. I'm trying to find it. Uh, sorry. Give me a second. I'm scrolling down through my bookmarks. It's taking a hot moment. There we go. There we go. Scroll down. Scroll down. Um, I guess I could just look it up, but I know I have it bookmarked. One sec. February. So we've been like end of 2022. I oh, here it is. I found it. God damn it. There we go. I found it. Uh, White, do you want me to just link this to you? I could, I could just link this, link it to you directly here. One sec. Here. It's a good read. I recommend it. Um, Silent does a pretty good job at explaining like what it actually is and like the whole thing is like I'll, I'll tell you. I'll read the I'll read out the first tweet. Um. You know, if someone tells you that AI art is traced or collaged or anything like that, then misinformed at best, outright lying at worst. Um, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good thread. It it does a very good job at explaining what actually is happening when these AI Im art images are being used, because people like assume that it's just like stealing the images, but what's actually happening is it's more like it's it's learning patterns. It's basically like if I look at an image of how to draw anime and then I draw anime. It's like you, like that, you know? Like I'm learning how to draw it because I'm looking at it. It's not that I'm stealing. It's not that I'm necessarily stealing the image. It's that I'm learning from it and like using... It's basically a noise. It's a denoiser. That's really what it is. Like a, a TLDR, the AI image and generation image stuff is literally just a denoiser. Um, and it learns like how to do certain things by looking at like images and then like turning that random noise into an actual image stuff so yeah um it's really interesting um i think the biggest like the complaints people have is mainly just like people using it for bad things like um a lot also i've i've noticed a lot of people that like be, become like quote-unquote ai artists tend to be very self-absorbed and rude and stuff so it doesn't really help like but i would say don't hate the technology like hate the people that use it for bad stuff that's really what i would say like i don't think it's necessarily bad um i think it's more so just like those people that are bad that use it for bad things and you should hate them not the not the tool so so whenever i see someone saying like oh this um this game just like uses like a little bit of ai stuff and then they they like throw a hissy fit about it it's like Okay, calm, calm the fuck down. It's like, calm down. It's not that bad. Okay.
but it just feels like it's a it just feels like at this point like even talking about ai art in any way is just like people will just start going mental and crazy and they're just going to be like you know like it, it just like it brings out the mob i guess like if you mention anything about using ai like it, the mob is just like ready to form stuff and i think it's mainly just like people just don't want to be like on the other side so they all band together i mean there's a good reason why they banded together against ai art like i understand the reason they're coming from um but i think they've they they they've gone a little bit too far yeah twitter mobs yeah it's really just twitter mobs really that's honestly what it is yeah it's not just art related yeah i mean I don't see people figuring about, out about, like, AI and, like, like actual AI. I think it's more like if they see, like, an art stuff using AI, then that's when they start, like, any sort of notion that there might be people getting replaced, you know? I think that's when people start throwing a mad, mad fit and stuff. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. I mean, then again, NFTs are basically fucking dead at this point, which is good. Fucking good riddance. Fucking god. Stupid. Feel so bad for the people get that got scammed, but I mean, if you fell for it, then that's on you. So again, shouldn't have fallen for a scam like that. God, I heard um Ready Player. There's a new Ready Player Me movie coming out, like the second one, and I just could not help but think of like the amount of times I've heard fucking crypto bros using ready player me as like an example of their like future metaverse thing like god so overused jesus christ rather than the impending doom of skynet people are more worried about the jobs yeah i think that's why there's such a huge backlash to ai art because i think people a lot of artists especially are like they're scared that it'll replace them at, like they'll get replaced by the ai art you know so instead of being hired the, the companies will just use ai art which honestly not not a bad like concern like like that's a legitimate concern um i think i've seen it happen a few times already um so i can understand their like hesitation but then that basically boils down to we hate the technology in general and we want it gone and it's like that's that's not gonna happen. Like I, I just don't know what to say to you. Um, and AI would resort to violence. No, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I doubt it would too. The actually, if you guys know anything about Overwatch, um, there's actually an interesting case there because the Omnic crisis in Overwatch was caused because one of the god AIs, like, they called it a god AI, and it was, like, an AI that handled a lot of, like, everyday um, functions in the world, and one of the god AIs that was responsible for, like, preserving nature and stuff basically came to the conclusion that the only way to save, like, nature was to, like, eradicate humans. So that's why this AI called Anubis, which was the one that, like, protected nature and stuff, like, you know, environmental stuff, um, he basically started hijacking all the facilities that created the like omnics and stuff um and started like hijacking all the omnics across the world and started like programming them to basically just eradicate humans and that's how the Om omnic war started in uh in overwatch no not omnics um not omnic it's o-m-n-i-c it's omnics omnics are basically like the robots in overwatch like the sen the sentient robots they're called omnics no, there's no X at the end. It's it's a C. It's it's a C. It's Omnic. The Omnics. <laughs> but um <laughs> The Omnitrix, exactly. <laughs> I know I, I know it sounds like I'm saying an X at the end, but it's a C. It's an Omnic. It, but when I put an S at the end, it sounds like Omnix, like an X at the end, but Omnix. It's it's non X, it's a C. It's a C S. I know it's English. English is weird. I know. Um, yeah, I know because your your one of, one of your previous names was Omnix, I believe, if I remember correctly. I think. But yeah, no, I just bring that up because like uh, 
like it like that's like one of those like scenarios of like an ai basically like saying okay humans are the problem so so um Overwatch actually has some interesting lore. Too bad that the game is kind of in a messy state right now in terms of just in general. Like, I, I liked playing it, but um, I wouldn't spend real money on it. That's kind of why I'm glad Overwatch 2 is free, because uh, I would not have paid money to play it, so. <laughs> How much time do we have? We, we got about 10 minutes left, okay. Yeah, because like I said, I got I gotta step away at seven because I need to actually start cooking uh my food. I'm making hamburger helper tonight, so I actually need to um sit down and actually make the meat and stuff. Uh, which I want at least an hour to do that. I mean, it's not gonna take an hour to make the meat, but I do at least want to have some time to uh to do that. But yeah, do you guys like the backdrop? By the way, do you guys like um? Do you guys, do you guys think the backdrop looks fine? Like I know it looks weird with the lighting right now, but do you think the backdrop actually adds to it? In my, do you guys think that that looks nice? I think it adds to it. I like it a lot, actually. Um, I was wondering what you guys thought. Because, like, the radio tower silhouette is actually visible now. And then you got the, the power lines, too. Hamburger Helper becoming a reoccurring theme. I don't know. Like, ever since I found out how to make Hamburger Helper really straightforward, it's actually really nice. I actually like it a lot. <laughs> I think I'm going to make this mountain a little bit taller so that this, like, here, wait, I could actually do. Actually, we'll do this to, like, 350. There you go. Yeah, like, the lighting, the lighting looks weird right now. Um... The lighting, I mean, the lighting isn't, like, finalized, obviously, so ideally it'll look a little better. But, yeah, like, the whole point is, um, like, the, the, I, I kind of like the idea of, like, the mountain, the mountains, like, pushing out the silhouettes of these things so you can actually see them a little better. Um, I kind of like that a lot, actually. I think it's shaping up to be pretty good so far. How much have we gotten painted today? Uh, let's find out. Let's see. So, we've painted... Uh, so we paint, we, when, where did we start painting? We started painting, oh, right about here, right? This is where we started painting. So we started painting right about here, and we went all the way over here. Yeah, we actually got a lot painted today, actually. And that's nice. Look at that. Wow. I mean, we still have, like, God, how much? If I remember correctly, I think we went from... Yeah, we went from here to here. We went from right here to right here. We got, we got this section of ferns painted. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to stop painting the ferns right about here, and then I'm going to focus on the terrain painting so I can catch up. And then we'll have, like, this whole... We'll basically have about... Um, 25% of the outer crater painted for, but with the ferns and the painting at this point. So we're, we're like getting there. I will say um, one of the concepts I wanted to do was over here where the um, electrical station was I was actually thinking about turning this whole area into a field and um, I was actually thinking about turning this whole area into a field and just having like a sunflower field a field of like sunflowers around the power station that was one of my concepts i was thinking of doing so i just, i think you guys might like that like just having a sunflower field basically you know i think that'd be cool like i wanted to do like some unique stuff like that but like i said right now we're just doing the basic like forest and then once we get the whole entire outer crater painted and ferns then we can actually start like cutting out areas to put like a field and stuff maybe or making some more unique stuff i will say um i am gonna have to go back and actually make custom foliage for the lake because we're gonna have like the the grass reeds on the edge of the lake and stuff and then i think i might also do like um yeah like like reeds and stuff and whatnot um just so it actually looks like the side of a lake and stuff 
uh, and then I know for a fact I need to do a pebble pebbles for the bottom of the stream here. Um, and then once we get to this area, then I'm definitely going to have to uh, modify the terrain a little bit to actually fit the bridge and stuff, because I know that's not really set up properly yet. Um, then we get the other waterfall over here, which is very, very scuffed. Oh man, we still got all this to paint though. We still got a long. Oh, actually, we, well, this is uh, this is as far as we got on this road. So technically, if I wanted to uh, on my own time, I could actually paint uh, the ferns and stuff on this section here and get that all done too, and get that like connected, and then worry about this area down here later. And then they, like I said, we're kind of like slowly rotating around the entire crater. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to do that. Yes, I'm going to have mini, mini biomes in between. Like, I want to do, like, right now we have, like, some fields here in the Wanderer um, that'll have, like, flowers in them. And then if you guys saw the field in front of the Wanderer itself, we actually do have some flowers planted already. Oh. So, um, yeah. Oh, we still got to add the campsites back, by the way. Yes, I know, I know I need to add the campsites back to the, uh, the here. I just haven't done that yet. We will have them back. I promise we will have the campsites here, so. A swamp? Yeah, it's, I swear to God, someone mentioned the swamp to me. I think it was Sam that mentioned the fucking swamp. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe that's not a bad idea, but I would need to, I would need to see if I have swamp trees and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I'd put a swamp, but it would probably be, like, either over here so either this whole section would be a swamp or like the lake would be i don't know move the outhouse to the swamp that would be a phenomenal idea actually um actually unironically that would be a fucking cool idea as a reference as we move the outhouse actually i might turn this whole bottom section into a swamp actually so this whole section might turn into a swamp because then I can make all of this, like, be water, and then just put trees in here, and then put, like, lilies and stuff, and this could basically just become a swamp, essentially. That would be cool. And then I could even, um... Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Rise of the crater a swamp. We just got phenomenal drainage. We just got really good drainage. <laughs> I'm liking how it's turning out so far. I, I think, um... I think the work's going to be worth it. Like, I think the wait's going to be worth it, guys. Once this is done, it's going to look really nice. Um, and hopefully I can optimize it as well, which I'm not too worried about optimization. Once I get all the, the environment stuff going, then, like, yeah, there's some, like, other things I have to do real quick. Like, for instance, I got to work on the roads. I got to work on the power lines, which these ones I'm going to have to clean up the trees because they're kind of clipping. So I, I, But I still have to, like, attach all the power lines and stuff. Um, and then I'm probably going to move this watchtower somewhere else because I'm going to put something else right here, I think. Um, it's coming along, though. I'm very happy. They mentioned why isn't the crater a swamp. Yeah, I know. I've gotten that complaint, too. Like, why isn't the crater a swamp? I should actually, on this side of the crater, I should actually put more, like, pools of hot liquid or something, or, like, a geyser or something. That'd be kind of cool. We just got really good drainage, you know? Okay, well, that's going to be a wrap for me, guys. I am going to step away, and um, I'm going to step away and go make some food. Uh, but uh, once again, I will shout out my friend Sammy Ethan One, um, because he will be streaming more Pacific Drive tonight, so if you want to check his channel out, you are uh, more than welcome to. Uh, I'll be watching, so. Um, otherwise, I will take my leave here, guys. i glad you guys enjoyed watching. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow for Innkeeper. So, 